Hey, Karthik here with Dabble Lab and welcome to the second video of our dialogue flow series. Today we are going to learn intents, the basic building blocks of our agents. Simply put, intents are blocks that get triggered whenever the user says a specific phrase. So let's say the user says something like, I want to book a ticket or book a flight ticket for me. What Dialogflow's machine learning is going to do is it's going to understand what the user has said and try to match it to your specific intent. Now, when we talk about intents and when you create a new agent, Dialogflow creates two intents by default. That is the default welcome intent and the default fallback intent. So let's first explore these intents. The default welcome intent is something that gets triggered when the user interacts with your agent via one of the one click integrations available. So let's see how that works. So I have my simulator open here and right here you can see there's something called as talk to my test tab. This is the one click integration I was talking about. Now when I click on talk to my test app, what it's going to do is there we go. So when I clicked on the talk to my test app integration, it got me greetings. How can I assist? So this is the welcome intent. Now there's another intent, which is basically the default fallback intent. And this basically gets invoked or triggered when whatever the user has said does not match any of the training phrases that we have added for intents. So let's say I said something like my favorite color is red. I missed that. Say that again. So there we go. So if I say something which is not supported by my agent, any of the phrases, then the default fallback intent gets triggered. Having these two intents is really useful. The welcome intent can be used to tell your user what are the things your agent can do. And the fallback intent can be used to make an error sound more pleasing to the user. So in this case, when I said my favorite color is red, we can have the agent say back something like, I did not understand what you're trying to say. Here are the things I support. Would you like to try one of them? Right? Okay. So now that we are done with the default intents, let's go ahead and make our own intent here. So I'm going to click on create intent here and out here, I'm just going to say create an intent, which would be book flights. And I'll just click on save here. So I'm just going to create an intent for book flights, which will allow me to book flights for this example. So one of the training phrases that we can add to this would be book a flight for me. Um, book a flight, something like that. Now that is not how we always try to book a flight, right? One of the things that we always do is I say something like book a flight on Monday at 3 p.m. Now, once I do that, you can see that Google's dialog flow just automatically highlighted this. Um, that is the Monday part and at 3 p.m. part. And then what it also did is it created two parameters out of it. One is date, the value was Monday and the other one was time and the value was 3 p.m. Now, these parameters are referred to as entities, which you can see here as well. Now, once we have added these entities, what would also happen is Google's dialog flow, uh, Google's dialog flow model is just going to recognize almost any combination of date and time. So let's just go ahead and save this. And what I'm going to do here quickly is I'm just going to add a response. And this is going to be a dummy response for now, which would say something like, got it. I'll book the tickets for you. Now, once I've done that, let's just save this again. And I'm just going to click on done here. And what is going to happen is my agent's training model is going to start. And once the training completes, we can test it out. All right. So the training has now completed. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go here and say, book a flight for me on Tuesday at morning. So now you can see that when I said something like that, the, the agent responded with got it, I will book the tickets for you. So that means I don't have to put in all combinations of dates and time. This is something the model will automatically do it. And these are called as entities. 
Now, what we added right now was a system entity. What system entities are, uh, do, are they are basically pre-built entities provided by Dialogflow. Now, Dialogflow has a lot of system entities ranging from date and time, numbers, um, unit names, geography, contacts, names, and music. Now, all of this is automatically detected by Dialogflow. But in case you wanted to do something different and you wanted to add your own set of entities for that, we have a provision as well. They are called as developer entities. And let's see how we are going to use that. Um, so I'm just going to come back to my um, model agent here. And what I'm going to do is let's just go back to intents and we are going to create an intent here. Now what's going to happen is I'm going to name this as uh, favorite fruit. And once I do that, let's go ahead and type in one of the training phrases, which would be my favorite fruit is banana now once i do that you can see that a user can have different um fruit uh, favorite fruit right so i'm just going to click on this banana highlight this and you can see i can add any entities to that so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to click on create new uh, well before that i'll just need to save this model um save this intent and then i'm just going to come here and then click on create new and I'm just going to call this as uh, fruits. So I'm in the entities. I'm in the entity screen now, and I'm I've added a uh, own entity, which is also called as a developer entity, and I've just named it as fruits. Now there are different fruits that we can add. So I'm just going to add here strawberry, um, oranges, um, well, raspberry is a fruit and so on so you can keep on adding as many fruits as you want and google's training model is going to understand that anytime the user says something like banana or strawberry or oranges they are they belong to this um fruits entity now notice that uh, notice that the fruits also have something called as a synonym and the reason that is there is anything that um matches with this certain uh, main value gets added to the synonym. So let's say oranges, um, you can also call it as orange. Or if if you come from the place where I am, we also call it as Santra. So there's Santra, right? So I can type all these things. And now when what happens is when the user says something like, I my favorite fruit is Santra, um, that is what the model is going to understand as oranges. So let's just go ahead and click on save. Now, once I've done this, I'm just going to come back to the intents here. And let's go to the favorite fruit. And I'm just going to give a response here, which would say, that's a good choice. Eating fruits is healthy. All right, so let's just test it out. And let's say what happens when I try to say my favorite fruit is banana. So when I say my favorite fruit is banana, it, it says that that's a good choice. Eating fruits is healthy. Um, let's try one more. My favorite fruit is Santra. Well, that is local dialect for oranges. So let's see how that works out. And there we go. The re default response is that's a good choice. Eating fruits is healthy. So now that is how the developer entities work. But if you notice, when we added a banana fruit here, we didn't see the parameter getting reflected here. And the reason that is because we have not added this intent, uh, this entity here. So I'm just going to double click on this and you would see that fruits is uh, showing up here. I'm just going to click on fruits here. And there we go. The parameter name fruits has been uh, ha is now showing up, and this is mapped to the this is mapped to the entities that I, that we created. That is basically fruits here. So that is how a developer entity works. And we are just going to come back here for one final demo here. And what we are going to do here is right here in the parameters, you can see at the right there is the is list option. And what this is going to do is it's going to turn this parameter fruits into a list. So I'm just going to turn this on 
and I'm just going to click on save. Now what happens is if I said something like my favorite fruit is orange and banana. So you would see that it still supports that as well. So when we turn a entity to a uh, to a list, it's going to support any utterances like um, my favorite fruits are banana, orange and strawberry and so on and so forth. And that's about it. In this video, we learned about the default fallback intent and the default welcome intent. We also saw how to create your own intent and add your own system defined entities. We also saw how to add an intent and define developer based entities. We also turned one of those entities into a list. Now I hope all of that was useful to you. In the next few videos, we are going to go ahead all of this and build a full fledged agent. So make sure you play around with whatever was thought in this video. As usual, if you have any queries, please drop a comment and I'll get back to you. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the Dabble Lab YouTube channel. Thank you.